Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Berta Warrior here. Hope you guys are doing well. Well, this morning I decided to go out and because I had uh, promised my girlfriend I'll do something for her. And then I also had promised my husband I'll pick up some watermelon. So by doing that and different things happened, you know, like you remember like maybe like a two weeks ago when you go to like say for instance Walmart you do the self check out and you were not able to get money back you had to go into the regular line but now I think since last week you were able to go to a specific machine it's not all the machines where it's open and you are you can get a money but so for whatever reason today I just wanted to just go and pay with my card right and so by doing that uh, as I put my card in there, the machine asked you, do you want some cash back? So I said, of course, I want some cash back, right? And so as it was processing and trying to process it, process it, process it, well, what happened, he didn't have no money in there to even give it to me. So then I had to go over to back, go over to customer service in order to get my cash. So it's like, wow, wow, wow. And then since I had promised my husband I'll pick up some watermelon on my way back, you know, we got to keep our promises. We got to keep our promises. So I made two promises today that I had to keep. I had to keep, right, because I gave my word. It's nothing in writing, but because you said you're going to do something, my sister, my brother, we must do it. So uh, with that, so it delayed my time to get back here. So that's why I'm a little bit late today. But nevertheless, let us get into the Word of God. So did you study? Did you study? Remember, we must study the Word. We must study the Word. And we know that it's late. We are running out of time. You see the clock? The clock. It's almost midnight, right? And we know it is. Uh, Jesus is a gentleman, and he keeps on knocking on the door of our hearts. And he stayed, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us bow for prayer. The kind of gracious and Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. I ask you, Father God, right now that you will decrease me so that you will be increased is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, scripture reading is coming from Revelation chapter 1, Revelation, Revelation chapter 1, verses 8, and it reads, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty. May the Lord add a blessing. The reading, may the Lord add a blessing to the read, to the reading and hearing of his word. Remember, we got to be doers of the word of God. We got to be doers of the word of God. So let us go into our topic today, God's witness, not silence. God, God's witness, not silence. Okay, let's see. So we are still in my, one of my favorite book, the Sanctified Life by Ellen G. White. The Sanctified Life by Ellen G. White. This is the book we are still in. And it says here, God witness, not silence. Here we see how hard the heart may become when firmly set against the purpose of God. The fold of the church were determined to maintain their pride and power before the people. But the empire's decree John was banished to the Isle of Patmos, condemned, and he tells us, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ, Revelation 1, 9. But the enemies of Christ utterly failed in their purpose to silence his faithful witness. For this place of exile come the, the apostle voice, reaching ever to the end of time, proclaiming the most thrilling truths ever presented to mortal. Patmos, a barren rock island in the algae seas, had been chosen by the Roman government as a place of banishment for criminals. But to the servant of God, this gloomy abode proved to be the gate of heaven. He was shut away from the busy scenes of life and from the active labor as an evangelist, but he was not excluded from the presence of God. In his desolated home, he could commune with the kings of kings and study more closely the manifestation of the divine power in the book of nature and the pages of inspiration. He delighted to meditate upon the great work of creation and to adore the power of the divine architect. In former years, his eyes has been greeted with 
the site of wood covering hills, green valleys, and fruitful plains. And in all the beauties of nature, he had delighted to trace the wisdom and skill of the creator. He was now surrounded with scenes that to many would appear, would appear gloomy and uninteresting, but to John it was otherwise. He could read the most important lesson in the wilds, the desolated rocks, the mysteries of the great deeps, and the glories of their firmament. firmament. To him all aboard his impression impressed of God's power and declare his glory. So that concludes my test my my devotion it's not devotion the lesson for today God's witness not silence so tomorrow we're going to go into the voice of nature the voice of nature that is one our lesson for tomorrow may I share with you my devotion he always asks me Brenda why you always ask that because it's a question I know you can say yes or no but it's just a question it's just a way of um, Having, uh, what to say? Just a question. It's just a question. A great question. It says, hold high the standard. Mm. Hold high the standards. And this is um, my devotion, Our High Calling by Ellen G. White. It's an old book. See, 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 it's an old book. I had this forever in my library. I love books. I love books. Okay, so it says, go through, go through the gates. Prepare either way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highways. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. This is coming from Isaiah uh, 62 verses 10. The word of God not only set forth the great principles of truth and duty which should govern our lives, but it presents also for our encouragement the history of many who have exemplified these principles. Except the one perfect pattern there is not described in the sacred pages in single character more worthy of immunity of intimidation or Im intimidate meaning uh let me see let me go back i'm losing my space Man, let me go back let me go back except the pay except the one perfect pattern let me pray the kind of gracious and the father I ask you father god to take full control it's my prayer in jesus name amen and amen okay it says, except the one person, except the one perfect pattern, there is not described in the sacred pages a single character more worthy of immunization, uh, or meaning that enticement, enticement, than of the prophet Daniel. So if there's, if there's someone that we want to pattern our life after would be Daniel. And it says, exposed in youth to all the allurement of royal court, he became a man of unbending integrity and fervent devotion to God. He was subject to the fierce temptation of Satan, yet his character was not vacillating, meaning wavering, nor his course changeable. He was firm, firm where many would be healing. He was true where there would be false. He was strong where there would be weak. Daniel was a lofty cedar of Lebanon. Would that the faith, integrity, and devotion of the prophet Daniel might live in the hearts of people, of God's people today? Let me go back. Would that faith, integrity, and devotion of the prophet Daniel might live in the hearts of God's people today? Never were these noble qualities more needed in the world than now. Would you agree? In the records of those who have done and suffer for the name of Jesus, there is no name that shines with a brighter or purer uh, luster than the name of Paul, the apostle to the Gentile. The love of Jesus glooming in his heart. Let's say glooming. Let's say, let me go back. The love of God glowing in his heart made him self 
forgetful, self-denying. He had seen the risen Christ, and the Savior's image was impressed upon his soul and shone forth in his life. His faith, courage, and fortitude that would have not been dwarfed by danger to stay by obstacle, he pressed his way from land to land to spread the knowledge of the cross. Are the professed followers of Christ thus exemplifying the principles of their faith? Are, let me go back, where are the deep living holy experience which men of God were warned to recover? Has the standard of Christianity been lowered? Let me repeat that. Let me go back out here. Let's see that. Okay, so it asks us a question. It says, has the standard of Christianity been, been lowered? No. That standard remains just where God placed it. Holy men of ages pa past were required to give up all for Christ, to cherish his spirit, and to in, uh, Im imitate his character. Nothing less than this will he accept now. When called to give up all for Christ, who will stand the test? Let me repeat that. When, when called to give up all for Christ, who will stand the test? Did that conclude my devotion today? Hold high the standard. Mm. Okay, so here is my hymn, my closing hymn. I don't know, my camera seems to be very dark. I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe because my sunglasses, I have a, a thing in there to cover my eyes from the sun. So maybe that's why. So nevertheless, let's continue. Okay, nothing between, nothing between. I gotta drink some more water. Nothing between. It said, nothing between my soul and my Savior, not of this world, delusive dream. I have denounced, renounced, I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine, there's nothing between. Nothing between my soul and my Savior, so that this blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor, keep the way clear let nothing between nothing between like worldly pleasure habits of life though harmless they seems must not my heart for him ever sever there he is my all there's nothing between nothing between my soul and my savior so that his blessed face may be seen nothing preventing the least of his favor Keep the way clear, let nothing between. Here's the last one, last verse. Nothing between and many hard trials. Though the world, though, though the whole world against me convey, watching with prayer as much self-denying, triumph of last, triumph at last with nothing between. Nothing between my soul and my savior so that this blessed face may be seen nothing preventing the least of his favor keep the way clear N let nothing between so keep the way clear let nothing between yes my sister my brother it should be nothing between the Father and us. There should be nothing between Jesus and us. There should be nothing between. Remember, we are the ambassador of Jesus Christ. He had gave us a mission, and the mission is for us to be the living example. We need to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. So where he sends us, we need to go. If a friend calls us and need help, we need to be that person that listening and be able to to deliver the help and if not we probably need to probably refer them to someone else if that if that's the case my sister my brother so let us continue to remain faithful until the end let us bow for prayer 
the kind of gracious hand of Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father God. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father God, that's all we can say is thank you. Thank you. We give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Okay, my sister, my brother. So if this was value, if you have received a nugget, a nugget, a nugget. Remember, God has a high standard. So whatever you have received out of this message today, can you do me a favor? I mean, you don't have to. Don't like don't share don't make a comment don't follow me on youtube don't 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 you don't have to do any of that and thank you thank you thank you for stopping by for taking time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today until tomorrow what did i say our topic is going to be the voice of nature i tell you we can learn so much so between the bible and nature is God's book. Nature and the Bible is God's book. So let us continue to remain faithful until the end. So I don't know if you had stepped outside, but you need to go outside, get the fresh air. If you are having any type of um, troubles or trials, my sister, go outside, sit and, bring, and take, it, take it to the Lord. He has already dispatched angels to answer your prayer. We just got to believe that we have to believe without a shadow of a doubt that God has dispatched angels to rescue you. All we have to do is say, Lord, help me, help me, help me. And, and uh, as we continue to remain faithful, my sister and brother, this is no time to give up. This is no time to give up. Remember, God the Father has measured whatever it is you're going through. And he knows you can pass the test. He knows you like Job. You can pass the test. That's why it's in your lap. So let us continue to, to, to give God the praise, honor, and glory. And praise and praise him. You know what? I find that we don't praise God enough. I don't know about you. But sometimes I find myself I don't praise God enough. We need to give God all the praise, the honor, and glory. And if you want to put a little bit sweetener in your your cup you put patient endurance and prayer so put some pep in your step patient endurance and prayer and as you continue to drink your cup my sister sweeten it no complain don't murmur it don't complain don't be telling your friends whatever because bottom line is they have their own issues as well right we all have our own uh, in, uh, um, stresses or trials to go through because God sees things in us that is not of him. So he's giving us this bitter cup to purify us, to cleanse us. So we should not be complaining because if you complain, he gives you another dose and another dose and another dose until you become perfect in this in his character so let us remain faithful until the end so until then my sister and brother thank you thank you thank you thank you love you love you love you love you love you until tomorrow be blessed and take care